have been fishing before? Okay, I was hoping to see a lot of hands out there. Now, it may come as a surprise to you that I was not always vegan. I didn't come out of the womb with, uh, you know, green and ready to eat vegetables. In fact, I started on milk, which I think is where we all probably started, right? I think if I were vegan as a baby, I would have died. I think that's how that would work. Um, and then, uh, you know, then I did that Gerber mashed baby puree stuff. I'm sure that was a lot of fun while I was eating it. And then I graduated to real food where I grew to love meat and steak and, uh, and all sorts of things. I even ate liver. That wasn't my favorite thing to eat, but I had no choice. That was the back in the day and age where you had no choice but to eat what was on your plate. So um, how many of you grew up in that time period? Oh yeah. <laughs> and you know what? For all those years I was told that you needed liver for iron and it was wrong. In fact, liver is not that good for you, they say. So anyway, um, I digress. It may come as a surprise to you, but I was not always vegan. And I used to love, love, love fishing. Well, I loved the idea of it anyway, but I found it took far more patience than I often had. And sometimes there was no, a little, there was little to no catch, if you know what I mean. You'd spend hours and hours and hours, and the most I'd pull up is like seaweed, you know, and it's like, oh, or a sunny fish, which is even worse. I'd rather catch seaweed than a sunny fish, right? You gotta throw those things back. Um, how frustrating it can be to not catch any fish. Now, I used to uh, go fishing with, uh, with a friend out in, uh, you know, we often would do uh, fishing in rivers, and I, I loved uh, going trout fishing. Uh, for rainbow trout, brook trout, whatever you wanted, to be, whatever came on my hook, I was happy. And then there were those times, of course, where you where you catch a fish and you reel it in, and it comes out of the water, and you're like, "Look at that monstrosity! That's awesome!" And then the line snaps. How many of you have had that happen? And the fish just goes right away. And it's like, oh, you know. <laughs> That's probably why I became vegan. You see, I'm fencing this stuff out to you now. But how frustrating it can be to not catch any fish, and, and then again, even more frustrating when you do catch, but the fish gets away. Of course, I have since become a fisher of a different sort, a fisher of people. When I started off as a youth pastor, I remember that I was excited by the idea of being a fisher of youth. How awesome could that be? Youth rock, right? Uh, oh, we got rock on, I like that. Youth rock, right? Rock on. Oh, we can do better. Susanna, was that good enough? I don't think that was good enough. Let's show our youth representative right here how awesome youth are. Youth rock, right? There we go. Okay. I was getting worried there for a second. But I remember how, how awesome and excited I was to become a youth pastor and to be a fisher of youth, but I found that it was not quite as easy as I thought it would be. Many of you graduated or left because they liked the previous leaders and were uncomfortable with the change of new leadership, which is common, not just in youth, by the way. We see that in churches, too, right? One pastor goes and out go with a few people with them and vice versa. So this is common. But long story short, immediately as I took over, our youth went from 20 youth to four. Yeah. Whoa, <laughs> right? And I, while I may not have displayed it on the outside, inside I was going, oh my goodness, what? Like I showered, I don't bite, like what happened here, right? Um, and I, I lost a good many fish in the net as it was handed to me. No matter how hard I tried to refill the nets, it was only the four remaining fish I held on to. By the end of the summer of my first year, there were still only the same 
for youth in our youth group. And nothing I tried seemed to catch any more fish. And I tried all sorts of things. I thought this would be cool, I thought that would be cool. Hey, we'll even talk about King Kong in a way that relates to God. Yes, I did. Um, and, we will, and we will do all these cool sorts of things, and yet, I mean, I think the four youth that, that were there were enjoying it, but it, there was only four youth, no matter what I did. And people began to scrutinize. Now, we don't scrutinize in the church, do we? <laughs> and people started to scrutinize my fishing abilities to make matters worse. Now, we've all been there before, right? We get so tired of fishing because it seems to bear so few results. How many of you have been there before? Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Okay, we've all been there before. We've, we get tired of fishing because we're just not catching any fish. We're tired of holding events because no one comes. We're tired of teaching Sunday school because it seems hopeless with so few children. We're tired of doing ministry because it seems there are less and less fish. We've all heard this argument. We've probably participated in this argument, right? Where are all the people? I remember the days. I remember the days when there were 500 people in church. We were teaming through the back. It had the balcony filled. There were 20 kids in Sunday school, maybe 30, maybe 40. We were hopping around like there was no tomorrow. And oh, look at us now. <laughs> Where are all the people? They're out playing soccer. They're out doing other things besides going to church. We've been there before, right? Are you feeling me on this? Is this where we are as a church? <laughs> well, she, right? In today's scripture, we are reminded about how tiring fishing can be. How hopeless it can feel when the results don't match what our hopes are. Even for fishermen, especially for fishermen like Simon Peter, where their lives absolutely and totally depended on catching fish. If you didn't catch fish, you didn't eat. You didn't pay the bills. You didn't pay the taxes. You didn't support your family. So we're reminded about how tiring and tiresome fishing can be. But the scripture also reminds us the possibilities that exist in our Lord God. Amen? It is when we are tired, when we are about to give up, when we are feeling hopeless, that God reminds us that the work is far from over. And that all things are possible through Christ who gives us strength. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. When we come up with empty nets while fishing, Christ does not call us to retire, to give up, or to quit. Rather, Christ calls us to go deeper. To sail in new territories, in new waters, and to fish different waters. Now, I, I could have quit. I could have quit. I could have said uh, that this was just not worth it. I could have quit youth ministry when I only had four people show up for months and months. When I started getting scrutiny, like, you know, what are you guys doing? It doesn't seem like you're doing much of anything, you know. Uh, I could have quit. I could have said... Oh, I gave this a noble attempt. Oh well, must not be. Let me pack in my line, go home and do something else with my time. I could have given up. But I kept believing that God was going to perform miracles in that ministry and in that church. Amen? Now, I began to think outside of the boat and to sail into new territories, which actually started by listening to the youth I had there. Instead of me telling them what I thought they would think was cool, I started to listen to them and find out what their needs were. Amen? That's a pretty amazing thing when you listen to people. I started to build up a core. I started gaining their trust. And before you knew it, four grew to ten. Wow. Ten. <laughs> Now I'm at half the amount of youth that were once here, right? This was awesome. Then I decided to take my love of music and start an open mic. 
Now, when I grew up, when I was a brooding teenager, I used to hammer out power chords on my guitar and write like brooding lyrics, and I thought it was awesome. And I used to love go, to go express myself at open mics, which were often held at bars. And for some reason back then, they let me in. I couldn't drink, no. But they let me in to play my, to, to play my music. And I used to love the open mic format, and I thought, oh my goodness, wow, music's pretty universal. I wonder if we held it, an open mic at a church, which is not a bar, by the way, if we held an open mic at a church, I wonder if the youth today would like to express themselves just like I did when I was their age. And lo and behold, the 10 youth that we had, plus some of their friends, we had about 15, 20 at the first open mic, the next open mic, we had 30, it grew to 40, it grew to 50. Then one day, I walked in, one night I walked in, and there were 80 kids that showed up, 80 kids, and I was the only responsible adult there. Wow. <laughs> what are you, I, they were everywhere. They were, they were running wild on, on the floor in the, the fellowship hall. They were out in the cemetery doing God knows what. I'm like, oh my goodness, the next day I walk, to, I walk into the church office and I'm like, listen, if we're going to do this, I need the church present, amen? If we're going to do this, I need the church's support. And before you knew it, there were adults there as well. And they were sitting and enjoying the music that the kids were playing. I'm sure they didn't go home and buy that music, but they were enjoying watching the kids play. And the kids, in turn, would, would, would sit there and listen to some of the older people play music and would enjoy what they were playing. Again, probably didn't go home and buy it, but they enjoyed it. And what started to happen there was community. Community. Out of my willingness to go deeper, to chart new waters, we had an abundant catch. Amen? And people who initially came for the music and the fun and the self-expression found their faith. When I was leaving to be appointed to Harmony Hill, one of the youth came up to me to say goodbye, and she said, Pastor, uh, well, she didn't say pastor, she said Todd, but that's okay. Todd, um, I just wanted to let you know that when I came to the church, when I came to this open mic, I didn't know who I was, what I believed in, if I believed in anything at all. But now I know what I believe. I know that I believe in Jesus, and this is my church. She had never, barring being a captive audience during a youth group event, she had never, ever come to church on Sunday. But she had found a relationship with God through that open mic, and that became her church. Amen? Amen. In Scripture, sisters and brothers, God is reminding us that with God, all things are possible. If God is with us while we fish, what will stop us from an abundant catch, amen? Through your generous support, through your prayers, your presence, your service, and your generous gifts, we will witness to this community and to the world that Jesus Christ is risen, that Jesus Christ is alive and well, and that Jesus Christ is Lord, amen? Amen, right? Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord, amen? Okay. And that God's kingdom is for real, and God's kingdom is at hand. We will support our efforts to become a hope center here in the greater Newton area, to bring Jesus to people and people to Jesus. We will support our conferences efforts around the world, including in its partnership with Tanzania. I want to turn your attention to the screen to check out this, uh, this video. Congregations. Uh, in East Africa, with the 
sons and daughters of God, and they have a heart and a passion to learn. United Methodists in Greater New Jersey and the Tanzania Annual Conference are entering into an exciting new partnership to make disciples grow congregations, support pastors, go deeper in faith, and offer hope to our global community. There's going to be a church. Hope will rise up out of this ground. We need you that teach you what you get to teach you to And we can make revival. People from all the surrounding villages will be able to come and get medical care that they need. They'll be able to worship. This is a new day. We are so excited about this new partnership with the Greater New Jersey and the conference under the leadership of Bishop School. The Miracles Everywhere campaign will grow a pastoral school that will train Tanzanians to start and pastor churches, support clergy salaries, so that pastors are paid $100 a month, build a hope center with a health clinic, a school, a church, and a mission hosting site. And all of that is making a difference. It's a new kingdom. It's God leading us into a new dimension a new way of doing church. Their children will be able to learn and grow. And it's all because United Methodists are working together. The Miracles Everywhere campaign will raise $5.2 million so that we can transform the world. We've been praying for this moment to happen. And it is happened. We're blessed by our experience here. We had a great pastor school. And what we have found is the enthusiasm to grow the United Methodist Church here. So I want to thank all the people at GNJ for your prayers, for your commitments, for the money that you'll be giving. I thank you for people in New Jersey who continue to their money. I hope we're going to get to another training next year. We're thankful that GNJ has the vision to reach out to others and resource and prepare them for vital ministries. And I pray to that and hope that this partnership will continue. Hope will continue to rise up out of the ground. Miracles Everywhere campaign. Help us fund a miracle. Thank you so much. God bless you. Friends, with faith and effort, we will grow from lamenting ministry. Looking backwards into the past and how great things were and being stuck there rather than looking forward into the future. We will go, we will grow from lamenting ministry to exclaiming, holy mackerel, Jesus, what are we going to do with all of that fish? <laughs> Amen? Yeah. There are miracles everywhere. And there always have been. We've just turned our eyes closed. We've closed our eyes and our hearts to the miracles that are happening everywhere around us. My friends, it's time for us to remember that there are miracles everywhere, and they're happening right here, right now, in Newton United Methodist Church, and they're going to happen in the greater Newton, New Jersey area, and no one knows what's coming yet, but God knows what's coming, amen? And we are going to be the vessels that do that, amen? There are miracles everywhere here in Newton and in Tanzania, Praise Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you and praise you for what you are doing in our lives, in our community here in Newton. We thank you for what you are doing and for reminding us that this isn't our show. It's your show. And we've been invited to be a part of of this act. Lord, help us to grow as your disciples and apostles who go out into the world and bring Jesus to the people and people to Jesus. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen.